But there, there's a part in the new special, and thank you, China, where you talk about when you're pre-med at NYU. Yes, sir. And you, Obviously. you <laughs> made <laughs> naturally. As, you as made something that I thought I was hoping you were going to go more on, and you didn't. Mm -hmm. But you failed the chem lab because you made something that was cocaine adjacent. Oh yeah, man. Uh, I mean, that's a <laughs> talk true to me story. about that. <laughs> that's talk a, to me about how one makes that. Good. What's up, dude? Good. How are you? Oh, Shoot. sorry. We got. We we did our best Whatever to clean. You did, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just fucking throw it in the trash. <laughs> What's the word, man? Not much. How man. are you, dude? Good, good. Tired. Just got back from Montreal. Oh yeah. Oh, you just left. Yeah, yeah. Just oh right, right, right. Good time. That's um. Beat up. <laughs> yeah. Is it a good time up there? No, yeah. My people you've party never been up there. No, no, never have been. It's, uh, it's a wild time. You see, you hit any new room? What's that? You hit any Nuru? What's a Nuru? The Nuru massage spots? No, no, <laughs> no. No, come on. You can tell me, dude. <laughs> no, I don't know what the shit is. We, we were just talking about it. Because you know, I'm they're, not sure. No, 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 what's a Nuru? What the fuck's a Nuru? Because <laughs> they're, they're known for their strip clubs and their their massages and whatnot. I've been to I've been to Montreal for that reason of like checking out strip clubs and stuff for a bachelor party. And I was just like. All these women feel trafficked, you know. Dude, <laughs> it does. Uh, I feel like when a place is really known for it, it yeah. makes you go like, "Wait, what's going on yeah, here?" Yeah, why do I want to do this? Like yeah, everybody's maybe. got every city has strip clubs. Why can't they just be normal? Why do you have to be like the capital? It's of like it? it's like if you like you're in Alabama football, like you're scouting junior high kids. <laughs> yeah, right? like, like, yeah. You're, you're you're handing kids like contracts that they can't get out of and shit like that. It's it not is, fun. It <laughs> is a problem. <laughs> but the, yeah, we well, I went to one recently, and I'm I'm 33 now. This is probably. I was probably 30, 31, like a little pat. I, I was a strip club guy when I was like 17. Uh -huh. And then I kind of grew out of it. And uh, and we went to one probably in our th early 30s. And we went before dinner. We were like, we were like, we're like, we got to check it off the of box, say we did it. Yeah. And we got in there. We all had one beer. And we're like, let's get the fuck out of here. In it's Montreal? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's not fun. It, it feels like something you grow out of. Yeah, and, yeah. You're throwing and, toonies at them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what are we doing? <laughs> um, so what's the word, man? You got this new special out. I do. It's called Thank You, Thank China. Thank You, China. Yes, sir. What's the title uh, about exactly? Well, I've been touring for the last year and a half all because of tiktok yeah okay um and so tiktok it, is really what did it tic it is 100 percent. i owe it all to tiktok Unbelievable. like it's just like just doing uh like your comedy clips or all are my you, all my stand no i don't there's no dancing there's That's no crazy. <laughs> there's no talking to camera yeah, uh, I, I feel like tiktok usually you know you almost got to play by the rules a little bit use their fucking I don't know features and edits and yeah. all that and do do the, the trends, but you're just doing your comedy on I there. Got, and just I, I've been very fortunate in that uh, you know I've been doing stand up for a while, you know, like 13 years now, and I've been at the cellar for like I think since 2016, and the cellar has been very proactive about like recording all sets and mm. giving those if you request them that you get those sets from t on tape, and I've just been like once pandemic ha once like shit shut down, I started putting all my clips up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then once TikTok became a thing, my wife was like, you should get on it. And I was like, all right. And then I didn't really listen. And then my boy told me, he was like, you should get I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> it's always the way. Shout out, shout out to my wife. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's always the way, and, man. And, it's like, uh, you, you almost need to, in a relationship, you need to convince the other person that is their idea. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Because if you say it, shit ain't happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but so then, uh, like, I started putting all my clips out, I think in like, um, I want to say like November, December 21. Uh, and I don't want to say overnight, but like this is also because like uh, uh, TikTok was still allowed in India that like one of my first clips went like mega viral, mm -hmm. like like 500,000 views. And I only had like, you know, 500 followers about right, that point. Right, and right. so I was like, oh, this is this, this is a good is, idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just 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 something like a I didn't think it could help build me a tour is like people's shit was still locked down. It was just like, let me just keep adding because there's no cost to it necessarily sure. like, got to i already have the clips i can edit them myself throw them out and what ended up happening was like around april of of 21 sorry in november of 2020 i started putting right, stuff out right, right. april 21 like i had a i had a show scheduled in houston and i was like let me see if i can use tiktok to drive ticket sales to houston like let me see if i can use my stand-up clips put some copy on them that'll help drive tickets to houston and we went from a 70 person show one show to uh, four 200 person shows in Holy houston shit, with one tiktok with like not one clip oh, but just but like, like a series yeah. a series of clips yeah. with me with the mission of being let me drive so, ticket sales and it crazy. ended up and it was like oh shit this is a real thing my manager was like we got to get you an agent and then yeah. you know a uh, shout out to my manager reg tigerman and uh 
my agent that came on board, uh, TJ Mark Walter, was just like, I know what's happening right here. Uh, I, I see the vision. Let's fucking get on it. And we went from like no tour dates in April of 2021 to like, I just sold out the Wilbur last week. You Dude, know? Yeah. So, Congratulations. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, fucking it's been unbelievable. Nuts. Mm. That yeah, is yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, it felt pretty good. It, it's weird. Really, when, when TikTok, I was so wrong on TikTok because when it was going bananas, I was like, these numbers are too big. Yeah. This has got to be the the click farms and the Chinese this and that. Yeah. And and then when the D'Amelio girls were like, they were at the mall or something. Uh, who was Char- I don't know Charlie that. and her sister oh, yeah, are like yeah, the yeah. top. Like they have like 100 million followers on there. Yeah. But they do all the dancing and shit. They got mobbed like they were the fucking Beatles yeah. at a mall. And I, that was the one thing that I I was like, you, you'll be able to make money off of this. You have followers and numbers and shit. People pay for that all the time. But I don't know if any of this is tangible because it just feels like inflated numbers. It's crazy. But when I saw how much people get mobbed or how much it moves tickets, it's like it's actually the most tangible of all the apps because it translates to to sales or whatever you want more it, than anything. It, it took a while for me to uh, realize – just who was on TikTok? Because that, you know, like the my initial hesitancy was like, I'm 36 years old. The yeah. fuck am I oh, doing? me too, man. I mean, you know, it was like, like I'm not. I don't want to be on here. It almost felt like creepy. I was like, exactly. I don't want to be viewed as some like pervert. And right. it's like, no, you're just a bad businessman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, then I realized, you know what? I'm not on it to view shit. I'm just right. on it to put my stuff out yes, there, and yes, whoever yeah. ends up coming to the shows because of it or watching my videos because of it, that's all net positive. And then I started doing shows, and it was just like. Yep, everybody's on TikTok. Yeah, normal people of all ages, all every ages, ages every demo. Yeah, like yep. eighty year olds have come to my shows Dude. from TikTok, and like nineteen year olds have come to my shows. Uh, that from that TikTok. whole it's fucking nuts. That whole like uh, image of TikTok is maybe it's still out there, but it's it's it's, it's just wrong. You no, know? it's either it is. dead or wrong because it's like it just is the most mindless. Like you turn it on, it just goes. And they just swipe. My, you my can do that whether you're 11 or 111. Yeah, is it's there, beautiful. Is there rebranding right now of the uh, like an educational system, an edu- 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 educational mean? platform? They're saying TikTok is that yeah. TikTok is saying TikTok right. commercials <laughs> they, are now hashtag TikTok taught me. You, well, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I no, mean, see, look, that's the problem. <laughs> you know, Google gave a internal <laughs> talk uh, not too long ago, maybe like two or three weeks ago, um, and they were talking about how. TikTok is gonna. Is, they're concerned that TikTok is gonna eat their lunch when it comes to search. Granted, Google's still like yeah. the biggest search engine sure. of all time and remains like a huge market yeah. player. But more and more people of a certain age group are going to TikTok to find like reviews and find like no how to do shit because Bro. it's an immediate it's instant. Video. Yeah. It's so it's like, but like I don't like Google's video. One I'd click away. Read it. Yeah. I'd, I'd TikTok is is you don't even have to click once. <laughs> like Google, you have to click one more time for the review. Yep. I mean, it's I, there. I, it is it is crazy. It is funny watching those TikTok hacks because in the beginning there were some funny things where it's like you learn something about how your dishwasher works or a feature on your phone that you never knew. Mm-hmm. And now they're, we're like scraping the bottom of the barrel where people are like, did you know that like this lighter produces fire? And you're <laughs> like, yeah, fucking man, we did. We knew everyone's, this already. Everyone's Dude, trying they, to get on <laughs> and, and catch this wave. And I'm just very fortunate man. that I got, yeah. I got on very and I, early. I, I, you did it in, in, in a natural way too because I really, I do, anybody, like whatever your grind is, get your hustle on, get there, get to the finish line, however. Right. But when you're like, Doing the dances and shit when you're, you know, not a teenager. It's like, yeah, on. yeah. What Can't we doing? find an age appropriate way to do it? You so know? many, so like, good I, on you for just doing it through comedy. I had to just put, I like, I'm, it's because I'm like not talented in any other way. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I know that. I know that I, feeling too. You know what I mean? Like, we can't, we can't sing, we can't dance, we can't do any of this shit. We yeah. can just do this. I can and that's do it. stand up well. Yeah. And my favorite part is, like, sometimes I'll read the comments. And when I, before I had a team, like a social media team doing it, uh, I would read some comments and like big mistake, big huge mistake. mistake. <laughs> but they're like, you you can't do stand up, and I go. It's like a forty year old man yep. with like him and his daughter like doing mm. like the saddest shit ever. I'm like, mm. bro, what? Who? Hey, first of all, you're a terrible father. Like on, <laughs> spending your time on TikTok talking shit to someone just doing whatever the fuck they want. And second of all, you have seven videos, a collective of like six hundred views. Like, get off my dick, yeah, bro. You, Every, every the time, like, never reading the because you because you will get mad. Yeah. Yes, and then you'll click and you'll be like, "I'm such an idiot for getting mad," yes. but that won't change you from getting mad. No. You'll still think about that guy fucking forever. Yeah. Yep. it yeah, won't yeah, be yeah. like, "Oh, never mind." It's it's out of my you mind don't now. release it. Yeah, no. it'll, yeah you're you'll still stay fighting with a, a teenager or a middle aged mom yeah, or whatever the fuck like, it is. Come on, but, like, I gotta get mad at myself. I'm like, man, why did I do that? That's exactly what I do. I get I get fucking real mad at myself. That's why I gotta stop. But there there's a part in the new special. Thank you, China. Where you talk about when you're pre med at NYU? Yes, sir. And you, Obviously. you <laughs> made <laughs> naturally. As, you as made something that I thought I was hoping you were going to go more on, and you didn't. Mm-hmm. 
but you failed a chem lab because you made something that was cocaine adjacent. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's a Talk true to me story. about that. <laughs> that's Talk a, to me about how one makes that. That's a true story. I wish I could remember the formula, but it was... Fucking Walter White over yeah, here. Yeah, fucking done with TikTok. Was, I just mixed some... I mixed some... Yeah, TikTok taught me how to make cocaine. Uh, I mixed something in this underneath the hood. You guys have taken a lab before where there's like a hood that... Oh, uh, I don't know that I have. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't make it too far in the, school. <laughs> there's a hood that like sucks all the um, bad gases out. Yeah, like, I definitely haven't done that. And there was some reaction. That's a, that's a, no, you're they don't do that at NYU. Regular, yeah, yeah, we don't we do that at regular <laughs> school, man. I took high school chemistry. We looked at rocks. <laughs> we just legit looked at rocks. Yeah, yeah. That was it. I had a... Uh, uh, I was I missed a step somewhere, and I was, there was some reaction that was supposed to be happening, and it wasn't happening. So I just added a little extra stuff, and I was, is it happening? I inhaled it, and like immediately, my heart was like, doo, 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 doo. and I went home after I, I had to leave Grinding the lab. Your teeth and yeah, shit. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I started talking real fast for no reason. Uh, I went home and uh, I googled like what what reactions happen because of this. And then I was like, this is like a narcotic adjacent thing. I was like, oh, I just yeah. made accidental cocaine. <laughs> and it was like, all right, I, I failed that lab. <laughs> and then I got C plus, and then that was it. The pre med was gone. When man. did were you doing comedy at the same time? No, no, I no. started in 09. I graduated in 08 right. with a finance degree. Um, obviously, the funniest thing you could do um, in 08. And then uh, I didn't recruit <laughs> to like shit. an investment bank. Mm. Uh, all my friends were like recruiting to like uh, you know big banks, small bank, middle. I didn't. I, I had two super days. I'm not sure if you're. You said you're, you're yeah, but I don't know what a super day is. Super day is when you do uh, like five interviews at the same place. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you go through like the yeah, analyst oh, yeah, yeah, associate, yeah, yeah. the right, managing right, director, right. the VP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I did two of those. And I didn't recruit to either one of those places. And then after that, when I graduated, I had no job, and I was like, "What the fuck am I going to do?" All my friends are like, "Now nah, did you undergrad?" NYU Stern pre med oh, finance. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Uh, so I, all my all my uh, elective classes were pre med classes, and my major was finance, and so. When I dropped pre med, I was like, oh, I'll just do finance. And then it turns out like finance is not as easy as it is yeah. as it made it seem. Like because yeah. all my friends were like super smart. I'm like, oh, I can also do that. Yeah. No, they were like a lot smarter than I was. <laughs> right. And so I graduated 08 with no job, nothing. And I was like, what am I gonna do? I was underemployed at Bloomberg making like twenty bucks an hour, which is decent money, but not for you, uh, someone who's spent supposed to yeah, 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 yeah. Relative to what I should have been making. <laughs> and then uh uh I was like fuck am I going to do in my life? I started, I took like this goofy writing class, like a very sappy writing class at NYU. I was like, this is sad. Why am I doing this? And then, <laughs> I think I took that class too. <laughs> yeah. No, for real. I, I, I yeah. was taking, like after graduating? I was. Yeah. I never graduated, but I was taking a writing class at NYU when I started working here. Uh -huh. I, like, I, like, I like, Once I got a job here, like an internship here, yeah. I just stopped going to that class. Like writing personal essays. That's what <laughs> yeah. the, the class was. I was like, this is fucking corny as shit. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, I forget. I wish I could remember the exact moment. I was like, I want to go get get on stage, but so you started. Oh nine, yeah, twenty three, something like that. Yeah, I guess I was thir twenty three years old, which yeah. is not like old, but you know, a lot of times you hear about comics who are like, you know, I was twelve years old getting up at yeah, the I'm comics not, like uh, at the, the school fair or whatever the fuck. No, it is, I mean, you know? Chappelle and a few other people started super early, like yeah. in their teens and stuff. And no, I, I didn't even know that stand up comedy was something I could pursue necessarily until like. Oh, nine. I, mean, I saw Russell Peters, his first special mm -hmm. come out in, I think, 2004, like it leaked on YouTube. And I remember like that was the first special that I could share with my parents and that me and my, to this day, uh, one of my close friends, we were floor mates at that time. The only other Indian pe person on the floor was yeah. my friend. And he was like, yo, come here. He's like, you seen this? And I was like, no, I haven't seen it. And we pulled it up. And it, at that point, I had less than like a million views wow. on YouTube, which yeah. was huge though at the time mm -hmm. right, in 2004. Right, right. And we watched it, so like, yo, that's fucking hilarious. And we died of laughter. Flash forward five years later, like in the back of my head, it's like, oh, Russell Peters did it. Maybe I could get on stage that's, too. And that was that's it. an interesting uh, mindset because I feel like there are people, I feel like I watch something awesome mm -hmm. and I'm like, that's cool. Wow. I imagine being able to do that yeah. versus like, I'm going to go do that. Yeah. That's a, I don't know how many people have that mindset. But I, like, I think most people see something awesome and they're just like, I could never. Yeah. Know? And those people who can are so dope. I grant, but, I had that, I probably had that same mentality in 04 when I saw that. Like, oh, yeah. that's fucking dope. I'll never do that. Come 2009, I'm like, why wouldn't I be able to do just that? Try how how yeah. do I do it? And then I just Googled the first open mic I found in New Jersey. It was Stress Factory in uh, New Brunswick, Vinnie yeah. Brands Club. And uh, it was a bringer mic. And I, luckily I had, you know, 16 first cousins all with it. <laughs> all very close Packed the joint out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was a ringer for, I mean, I had yeah. my I had my people there. Yeah. And I stacked the deck and I did. That to me though, I know I know it's about bringing people through the door to get stage time and shit, but I feel like my first times, I would not want my people there. 
I'm yeah, watch strangers to I had a mom and unnecessary not be confidence. Of yeah, <laughs> yeah, good for you, yeah an unearned confidence at the time. <laughs> I'm sure fr my friends would be supportive because they're friends, but yeah. I would not. I feel like bombing in front of my friends is like the worst thing I would ever. Yeah, want. yeah. Oh, I to did. this day, I, I don't want them to come to my shows. I don't like friends and family on my shows. I'm just like, please no. I had plenty. I had I did so many bringers and like I had such a deep uh, bench of friends that would come out to like. Gotham and all those yeah, places that require yeah, yeah. bringers and slowly over time that number all right we get it man we don't want to spend yeah, 45 dollars yeah. to see you anymore <laughs> uh but you know very early on like all my nyu friends i stayed friends with and, and friends with to this day like they came out in support i remember so, well the same indian friend that we watched also peter's special together i remember him like getting kicked out of an open mic because we were like he was drunk and like heckling that's so much <laughs> it, was, it was so much fun i was just look back very fondly well, at those I, days I, I feel like uh stand up in the indian community and world is is huge right like it's, it's, it's gotten uh there's gotten big bigger name yeah big names are, are are coming out and i feel like it's um i don't know if it's like is it newer over there or has it been always a thing or i, I just can't. feel like i'm hearing more indian comics and i'm seeing more um like indian you know like fans and like it's just growing and i think that. uh i think we're at um at least in Indian American comedy, like there's, uh, there's been a bit older, obviously, you know, there's Aziz, Russell, sure, yeah. um, Hassan, Mindy, et cetera. But in the Indian landscape, it's really, it's pretty new. Uh, yeah. the, the art form itself, you know, right, there's Veer right. and there's a billion other yeah, comedians, right. um, who are now coming up and like, but it's kind of crazy to see how quickly it's accelerated. Yeah, like it's gone, and there's a billion people, so it's a lot, it's a little wild. easier it, to sell shows. Yeah, I mean, yeah, pack I mean, shows out, but it's, it's it's a little bit of a cheat code. I mean, you still got to get the job done, but yeah. when you do it well, you know, you instead of selling a, a hundred, you're selling a thousand. Instead it's of a such thousand, a new, you're selling five thousand instead of you know. Indians are a very artistic people, yeah. and they love creativity. They sure. love doing whatever you know, like you know, Bollywood is as big as yeah. it is because. Indians love, love expression shit. and art, yeah. and this is just another art form that they could take advantage of and have a lot of fun with. And they love the language, and Hindi itself is a beautiful language. So, like, there's tons of wordplay that could be done there, and then masters of English like Veer Das and uh, Aditi Mittal and a bunch of other comics who were out there. I was just like fucking crushing the game, yeah. you know. Uh, I don't know much about the Indian stand-up landscape outside of my friends and like what's happened over there with censorship you think i was gonna say that's the other you think that shit is bad here forget uh, about it's it. fucking nuts over there bro shit, you, right? you get you go to jail for like beer das is like you know been harassed and like yeah. facing uh, uh jail time and all that kind of shit because of the stuff he said excuse me who was the comedian akash was talking about yes yeah, my guy shout out akash singh he, uh he wanted to do a documentary about a comedian who's in jail right now uh yeah i, uh, I don't remember his name, his name. i don't know yeah. the, i don't need, I don't know he's gonna yeah. go over and like he i think he's in jail or facing jail time and wants to like do a doc like exposing you know what what that what that struggle is like that would be that that'd be fucking dope as shit for akash akash to do. funny man yeah. akash if if censorship is a problem over there akash better not go perform over yeah, there. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's I was I was our boy's gonna be locked up and he's not gonna do good in jail you see those pretty eyes <laughs> see those pretty eyes he's, <laughs> he's pretty man no. he's got a who was that? i was talking to veer about this the other day because i was like in montreal actually i was like i'm afraid i would be a little concerned about going there only because of i would i know who i am instinctually is this to be like rude and and mean to yeah, authority yeah. Right. he's like you'll be fine just keep your American passport on you at all times. Like they don't, they won't fuck with America. Hanging on my neck. Yeah. Hell yeah, I'm like, <laughs> gold. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all that put shit. The power Christ compels you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep the vampires right. away, man. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think the scene is. I can't. I want to go tour in India at some point, yeah. and I, I can't wait to be able I mean, to do yeah, that. Yeah, it's 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 got to be a a huge mar opportunity and market, but also just like a you know meaningful thing experience. Yeah, I, you know, I have a lot of fans on YouTube who. A lot of fans would meet me in person, and I, they have the Indian accent. I'm like, "How did you hear about me?" And they're like, "YouTube." I'm mm -hmm. like, "Oh shit!" Like, I have a huge fan base in India because of YouTube. Like, TikTok is banned, so like everyone's on YouTube, and That's people the like, way, man." When Dude. they when they see him here, like, "You got to do shit in India." I'm like, "I'm coming. I got to figure I'm that coming. out." You you just said accent, which reminded me of another part of your special. Again, thank you, China. Very funny. Go watch it. Thank you, please. Uh, where the woman in the front row asked where your accents from? She did she I, mean like where in the tri state area? I, I, th I think I imagine. I mean, it's just like she, Bergen County. Uh, <laughs> I've gotten I've gotten a lot of like, why is your voice so deep? And uh, uh, why do you have like a southern drawl? And I can't explain either one. Uh, the drawl I can when I'm trying to like deliver a special like the way I was, I yeah. just slow down in my speech, and maybe that's it. Uh, but yeah, she was. 
I can't even talk about that lady. Like it's. Still, I was like, like, I was like, what? The yo, that was, the, was that, that was the least egregious thing she had done that evening. <laughs> and, you know, like she, I cut it from the special. We were debating whether or not it'd be like a funny blooper, but at the end of the special, she was sitting in front row. I came back out for an encore, um, and she threw a note on the stage saying, hey, I'm writing a book oh my God. about Patels. Would you want to be in it? And, and I opened the notebook, and it's like pink ink. And it's like, and I asked her, like, how old are you? And she said, 28. I'm like, you're way too old to be acting like this. Yeah. 28 is fucking <laughs> entirely. Do you realize where this fucking, this is a very expensive show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like five, six cameras with yeah. that are, like, cost a lot of money. Like, yeah. you think this is some bullshit? Like, That's crazy uh, to, on a night, you know, on, on the night you're doing your special. Yes. Somebody could it fuck was, it up. Or, it was or, some or, entitled know? bullshit. Yeah. And, like, I, I, she messaged me after, like, so you want to be part of it? I blocked her. I was, I was so annoyed. <laughs> uh, no, I hate oh, you. I'm, I'm sorry for bringing <laughs> it up. I want to sabotage you. No, no, it's fine. I mean, I'm not mad about it anymore, but I was just, like, in the moment, I was like, who the fuck? Like had I had the cameras not been running and had I not been concerned about going over union time, yeah. like I would have just talked Eating to this lady up. for yeah. so long, just like destroyed <laughs> well, everything. Well, this is about the problem it. though when you start to tour and you do start to sell tickets and you're all over the country and the world, is you see a lot of people and people mm -hmm. fucking suck. People are bad, man. Uh, <laughs> people. people are bad. That should be the second special. People are people bad. Are bad. Uh, yeah, that that is that's what. I'll tell you another art form you should get in with that voice is do some voiceover shit, man. man. I've, I've, Cartoons uh, and movies and I, uh, car commercials and shit. That I, voice is golden. Over pandemic, funny you bring it up. Over pandemic, my friend Mookie Thompson and I, a very funny young man, uh, old man, <laughs> uh, we made a cartoon called Zoo Idiots. Uh, it's also on YouTube. Please go watch it. Uh, but it's I play a pansexual tiger. Um, <laughs> and the whole cartoon is about like I've, all the humans have disappeared. You know, all the humans disappeared and like Venice and there's like dolphins swimming in the yeah, canal yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like what would animals do? They if, took over. Yeah, yeah. If, if humans took over, I mean, if animals took over a zoo and the whole take was just like, it becomes kind of like not 1984 uh, Animal Farm. Mm -hmm. You know, right, it's like right, right. we're trying to allegorize that and it was just so much fun to do. And I started with no, Mookie directed me from doing no kind of voiceover work to like I could... I could channel my gay Tony Tiger if I really <laughs> needed to, you know. And it was a lot of fun to do and to explore that like range. Dude, that's and stuff. the money, man. Pop I wish. in, talk for a couple hours, get out. Oh yeah, but it's so hard. Like that's not discount. How no, hard no. Is, I, we, we've been talking about that recently, actually, with a couple other interviews. Where it, I think it was like it. It, it's, a, it's an art form in its own right yes. and then all of a sudden every celebrity just got attached to a Disney one and it was like oh this is so easy and the pendulum kind of goes back and forth yeah. it's like it's not as easy as people make it out to be but it's be also an actor. You it know, requires yeah, a lot yeah, of acting to, to, I am a terrible actor <laughs> I, I know I would leave uh, Mookie's apartment slash studio where he built like this voiceover studio um, dejected just like I mean, I ain't shit because he would yeah. he would berate me <laughs> yeah. 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 no 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 <laughs> at the beginning of it he's like you gotta memorize the line. What the fuck is wrong? Like, you fucking feel it in your gut. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, bro. I didn't go to fucking Juilliard. Like, relax, man. That's what, like, where you say, you know, you got one talent, and that's it's that's, hard, that's man. Stand up comedy, but we uh, we had a lot of fun. I, I, my voice could. I have a lot of range in this one. I, I can do this really quick. Like, like, like people can't. It's like a very yeah, hard thing down. to do. Yeah, yeah, I can go. Dude, there's money in that, man. There's money in that for sure. Maybe if someone's listening, um, I could do body armor. Shout out to Kobe Bryant uh, <laughs> or whatever it is, whatever you need. <laughs> was Kobe body armor guy? Yeah, this is this is his brand, wasn't it? Was it? This is he, this is the one that he sold um, posthumously. That his, uh, his steak got like four hundred million dollars for it. No shit, dude. It yeah, yeah. still fucks me up. I was I saw a video of uh, Kobe talking to Bill Russell when he died the other day. Mm -hmm. I like I don't know for whatever reason because there's been celebrity deaths and athlete deaths and. Unfortunately, people come and go all the time. Yeah, I like I, it. Does not make sense to me that Kobe is just off the earth. He's Kobe's just not dead here anymore. That's fucking so weird. Kobe's death affected me. Kobe's my favorite athlete. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember where I, it was like January what twenty sixth that he passed away. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. We're either going 20, to or coming home from the Super Bowl. We got off the plane. Uh huh. Like as soon as everyone got service, mm -hmm. it started to it went up. It went nuts. Was, and it was yeah. like, no, this is it gonna be a hoax or whatever? Yeah. And I was like, Crazy. fuck. And then they said the helicopter. I was like, Kobe does take a helicopter everywhere. Yeah. He fucking hates traffic. And uh, and then I was like, I remember sat down thinking like, Kobe's dead? Crazy. Gigi's dead? Like, yeah, that, that whole no crew sense. is dead. No way. Yeah. Now, I was I was in shock like that whole day. I remember yeah. I was upset. And I saw Ari Shafir 
like a yeah. week or two later. Yeah. <laughs> Ari doing what Ari does. <laughs> and I shook his hand. It was after like he'd been in a lot of heat and I shook his hand. I said, if it isn't the man that killed Kobe Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember we had such a good laugh yeah. about it. You would think so. It's all right, man. It's For real. Kobe's yeah. skipping that LA traffic with some real you didn't die the yeah. hero or live long enough to become the villain with all yeah. this stuff today. I had like, that. Uh, I had that. I had a Kobe joke. I mean, I have a Kobe joke in the special, but I had a, I was doing a Kobe joke for a minute about like, that's the only thing that he couldn't beat was traffic. You know, it's just like if people. You people, can't beat LA traffic. Yeah, man. And that, that, I got a lot of groans from it, but I also had like Kobe fans like, yo, man, yeah. hell yeah. That's, you got, Kobe fans are also like a comedy fans. Too, and, yeah, yeah, I fucking love Kobe Bryant. Well, man. you see all this, uh, a, couple, the pa- a couple headlines the past week was Kylie using her private jet to fly like 15 minutes. She flew from one side of LA to the other in a uh-huh. private jet. Uh-huh. And uh, Taylor got hit, Taylor Swift use her plane 170 times in six months uh-huh. and it's all about fucking the environment pollution shit yeah so, i mean I everyone's mean, gonna pick a a, a victim that's or a, a culprit that's easy to take there's down. no way that anyone can really in, on the inside really be upset about that i refuse to believe that i just say to them just take one jet one time. <laughs> one time. <laughs> just one. if you got the money to have a jet i will fly to the fucking grocery store on my jet it's awesome it's fucking amazing it is awesome <laughs> i'm not trying to brag but i've been on once or twice it's like it's man, so dope I, I gotta get here and man. once you do it you're like i can't i, I gotta go back to the line yeah. and the fucking security and the this and the that it's you know how many drugs i brought shit, on planes <laughs> <laughs> you know, just 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 because you can I, drugs. <laughs> I made some shit it was cocaine like yeah. i brought it on my plane with me I don't 100%, know. man. Just, all these people just need to fly one plane and you would and you'll never go back, bro. <laughs> yeah. it, I was saying it, it is fun whenever, like, we, we you know, there's obviously, uh, you know, like uh, social issues that people fight for that are, are worthy and, and, and stick and matter for a long time. Yeah. And then there's always that one or two du jour where it's like, we really care about how often a celebrity takes their chat. Yeah. No, but, you don't. Oh, you then don't. today's is fucking. Gordon Ramsay, Gordon Ramsay. Oh, do? this is kind of funny though. Let me show you. It's funny. It's not. It's it, it's a it's a little. I mean, I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm never offended, but I was like, whoa, dude. It's, this is a little he's bit. He's getting much. a lamb. It's, it's on TikTok. It's, uh-huh. Yeah, it's a TikTok. I think an NBC put it out. Like it's him picking a lamb, uh-huh. and it's implied he's going to kill the well, lamb. Well, it's not implied. Yeah. He's walking you, in, you going, go. "Which one of you are gonna get slaughtered?" <laughs> oh, he says that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. He says it. He goes, "Which one of you am I gonna eat?" That's the nicest thing he said in a very long time, I imagine. (laughs) (laughs) That's fantastic. (laughs) Who's going first? (laughs) But it's like people getting mad about that one. It, Look at they all run away. Where it's the a little fuck? bit menacing, bro. It's Dude, a little bit weird. Where do you think what? you should see the yeah. fucking like a Purdue chicken farm? You yeah, want to exactly. see that? Yeah, 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 you yeah, want to yeah, see yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. what the evil people do? I know, I know, I know, man. But I mean, we don't have to celebrate fucking slaughtering little lambs, dude. dude we don't have to get mad. Like, get, getting mad about that is no, genuine. No, I would not. Insane. I would never like, get mad like, about it. Where do you think all the meat came from? Also, it's, it is a weird move. Unless he was like, let's just fuck up the internet today. Why are they killing that, fucking? Why are they killing lambs? Why don't you just buy it at the supermarket? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that, not that, like that, people look at the meat like in the rack. Like, oh yes, I can't wait to eat that. It's, it's, it's one Such step nice removed. Yeah, yeah, it's one step removed. Yeah, Relax. They, they fucking act some poor little calf for that, dude. Um. Also, part of your story is this uh, this battle of cancer, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I'm talking about it on tour. I don't want to reveal too much about it. Yeah. Uh, that's what my next special is going to be called. Thank you, God. At the working title is "Thank <laughs> You, God." Right now, but uh, I got very lucky with my diagnosis. I got. I was I was telling uh, a friend of mine the other day. I went from uh, uh, pain in my balls to surgery in five days, including Saturday Sunday. Really? Yeah, it was like lightning. I talk a lot of shit about the healthcare system on Thank You China. <laughs> uh, and and uh, uh, for as evil and as fucked up and exploitative and uh, all the other pejorative adjectives you can think of that for the, apply to healthcare system, American healthcare system is so fast. Where it's at. If you have cancer and yeah. if you have insurance, rather, yeah. uh, that it's so, just like, boom, I was like in and out. And you know, I had some connections. You know, my cousins are doctors, so I made some phone calls to see what we can do. and. Yeah, I'm very grateful. I, I, I'm gonna I, think I had. I think I'm gonna think I have testicular cancer for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm gonna, gonna keep be being like, "Is that a pain? What is that?" I tell every dude, I'm like, "There's no excuse to not touch your balls anymore. <laughs> just feel your balls." Did you up. now? Did you tell people about it? I was so my special dropped. My special I recorded it in December uh, 2021. 
Um, and I was like, I, as a comic, I'm like, I never want to do any of that material ever again. But Jan- come January through April of 2022, I still had like 30 shows lined up, you know, 30 yeah. dates. I'm like, fuck, what the? I, what am I going to talk about for an hour if I don't want to do any of this hour ever again? And then like for cancer. the cancer, <laughs> the, and then <laughs> like fucking cancer. January, I was just like on on stage with notes, like fucking around, like just talking bullshit, talking to crowd and stuff. February first week, balls hurt. Five days later, surgery, and I'm Didn't like, did they fuck up your diagnosis at first? Didn't they say it was nothing? Yeah, 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 That's yeah, yeah. crazy. Man. And then and then uh um, well, they didn't fuck it up. It was just like that. All the all the indicators indicated that's what it was. It wasn't. Oh, okay. They didn't make a okay. mistake necessarily. Okay. They just didn't have a complete picture. Got it. Um, and that's why the doctor that but ordered, they had said to you like it's probably going to be nothing. Yeah, yeah. And that even even the, even my urologist said the same thing. Shit. But that's because what the math was indicating. But then I did the yeah. blood work and I was like, oh, they were wrong. <laughs> but that first week of February, once that happened, I was like, literally, I, I could show you my phone. It's just like I was taking notes every day because I knew. This I just been be gifted yeah, yeah, from yeah, God. Yeah. Like, How sick is that? I, I mean, I, I <laughs> tell know? people all the time, uh, we're not comics, but just doing the podcast all the time, that like when something bad happens to me, my first thought is usually like this sucks. Yes. But sometimes my first thought is this is going to be good on the show. Yes. And it, that is, this is the ultimate one. Yeah. Cancer. The big, the big, the big, the big, the big kahuna. Yeah. Like to be like, this is going to be I got easy. It. <laughs> yes. Easy it, it, it light li- work. It literally <laughs> was. Uh, I said that like, literally I said that same phrase. It's light work to just be like, I had six days, seven days of just like, literally just taking notes of what's happening during the day. Yeah. And like within, I and I could say confidently, I wrote, you know, 30 to 40 minutes of the what I have in this hour in those six days. Yeah. You know, just like banging notes out, like jokes, 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 reiterating, reiterating to myself. And it's like, I was so happy. <laughs> because you struggling know, like, comic, just get cancer, bro. <laughs> because you know, like, you know, of all the cancers to get, testicular cancer is like quote unquote the best one. And yeah. I had the best version of testicular cancer in that, you know, it hadn't spread. And you know, my CAT scan's actually literally tomorrow. because uh, mm-hmm. you gotta get one every six months uh for the next ten years or so. Uh when was this? What the the, the, the cancer? Fe- top of February. Oh, this, this past February? Yeah, yeah, like six months oh, ago. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's Reason. far more recent than I thought. And, yeah. and uh, uh, what's it called? Like, I was so lucky and so fortunate, but the whole time I was th- thinking the same thing. I was like, life is about balance, man. <laughs> like, this, mm-hmm. something's going to happen. Right. My grandpa died four days before I shot Thank You, China. Uh, and, like, I had already lined this up, but I'd had, like... And this is the grandpa that you told your first joke to? Exactly. Yeah. And it was like, uh, uh, you know, I had, had, like, last year was... You know, granted, I did SNL and I, I did the Oscars. Chris Rock told me I was funny. Those are all like very high, huge highlights for my career. But from a stand up perspective, 2021 was the best year of my life as a stand up comedian. Like, I had achieved the dream of like, people know me, people respect me as a stand up comedian, fans respect me as a stand up comedian. I'm selling out shows. This is incredible. I have a special lined up to tape December 12th, 2021. December 8th, my grandpa passes away. I'm like, I was okay. He was 95. So I was like, okay, like this was, it was time and and I understand what was going on, but it was that same idea of just like, I was due for this. Mm -hmm. You know, like Mm -hmm. life is about balance. Like this is what happens. Like, and like, so it's important to just stay like kind of even keeled no Mm -hmm. matter what happens in your life. And then come February, I got cancer. The first thought was, I didn't even think like, and I'd say this 100% honestly, like, I was never even scared or mad or anything for a second. I was just like, I got to be right here this entire time because a everyone around me is kind of panicking, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, B, but more importantly, I was like, I knew that my life has been just like some giant, like weird universe giving and taking away from me. So it's like, okay, something's gonna even out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's got to even out, and uh, I thank God for a being healthy, but you know. For the cancer, so now I can have this new hour. <laughs> no, Shout how. out, cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, cancer. Man, Thank you, you China. Can. Thank you, cancer. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really that's unbelievable. <laughs> man. Well, it wasn't, you didn't uh, like hopefully go through too much pain and stuff. Like you got to it quickly. It was it. so fast, that's man. It was so fast. And uh, uh, I don't have a joke about it just yet. Um, but, you know, this is what the doctor told me such that, you know, like we, we were, the doctor and I were reflecting afterwards. He's like, thank Thank God you listen to your body because no, cancer, God. testicular cancer, <laughs> doesn't present with pain. I, I'm not sure if you're aware of this. Like it normally just it presents as a heaviness. So that's why dudes like really the ignore balls get heavy because it's a mass, right? Oh yeah. So and you'll like feel a mass heavy. on your and but I just had randomly some kind of pain 
and and I'd had a hernia like six years ago. So I, in my head, I was thinking, man, I just re-aggravated this right. shit. I whenever I I have a massive tour coming up, or like whenever I'm doing something like I want to be in shape for, I go a little too heavy at the gym, yeah. and I get like Rit tour something. Yeah, yeah. So six years ago, yeah. like I was right prepping for the Oscars. I'm like, I'm gonna be at the, in Hollywood, man. I'm fucking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I was doing back rows and shit, and I had a hernia. I remember that pain being like a very sharp pain in my balls. I don't mean, know if you ever had a hernia before, yeah. but mm. that shit fucking hurts. Right. And this was like not that, but it was similar, and that was sharp pain in my balls. I'm like, just figures that I probably just re-aggravated it. Yeah. Like, this is a surgery that you can kind of put off for a little bit, uh, uh, and that it, I was going to be off the road in April, so I, I'll just wait until April. But that night when I came back home from my birthday dinner with my wife and sister, I was like, "Fuck, <laughs> so this, this ain't right, man." Yeah, and I was wow. like, oh, "Let's just go to the hospital." Like. Worst thing they tell me is that it's a hernia and that I could just wait and then yeah. they'll fix it. I'll fix it later. Nope. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 2 a.m. I go to the hospital. 5 a.m. My life is entirely different. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a trip, dude. dude my but brother was God. so fat when he was a baby, he he, he <laughs> couldn't stop getting hernias. Like whenever, <laughs> whenever he like moved his own body, he'd get a hernia. It's too fat. Yeah. I had a, I had a, <laughs> my brother got like three hernias before he turned six months old. That's, that's <laughs> or fucking or a year, hilarious. Or it was. So, <laughs> I had a hernia when I was two. The first time I had Damn. a hernia, I, had, I, I was two years old. And uh, it came back to haunt me not like maybe three months ago because like so after after what's it called surgery and shit and like cancer settled down like this past April I went uh, to uh, I was watch I got tickets to see the Celtics play the Nets like the closeout game. Yeah. yeah. I went with uh, some of my friends who got the tickets and was like you want to come? I was like yeah let's go. I'm eating. The Have you ever been to Barclays? You've been to Barclays yeah. Center. Mm -hmm. You know that. Dude. Go ahead. Can I bitch about Barclays real quick? Please. I went to Barclays recently for WWE. Okay. Uh, not personally a huge fan, but I don't, know, I don't know why I felt compelled to say that, but yeah, I yeah, did yeah. it. And, anyway, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we was fucked up. Yeah. We would have been that fine knowing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the rest of the community should get on you for yeah, that. That was like, fucked like, up. I, like, I, I have a blast. Not that there's anything wrong with not that. Not there's anything wrong with it. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just... If I'm not front row, I'm not going. How about that? Because <laughs> okay. take my private man. plane. When, when we sit, row. when we sit front row, you can feel the fucking the energy. You want to see, you see the outlines of the ball. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> but I did two laps around Barclays uh -huh. looking for candy. And they didn't have any <laughs> fucking candy. This is the road. saddest complaint about Barclays Center I ever heard in my I life. I went to the wrestling <laughs> show and they didn't have candy. <laughs> it was crazy. Dude, was well, never candy. mind the parm and the momofuku <laughs> yeah, and all that yeah, kind of shit. That, 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 amazing <laughs> things in the world. I went, so I went to Barclays, and uh, David Chang has a, a sandwich spot out of Fuku, right? Like yeah. that's the name of his sandwich spot. And I was, I was like, I gotta try a spicy chicken sandwich. Ate that sandwich. It was so fucking spicy, but it was delicious. And then my, I, I had ditched my wife. She, we had agreed that we would need dinner together. But then I got these tickets last minute. I was like, she was like, yeah, go, go, go. Like I don't care. And she just had her alone time. But she had made. I had requested. Uh, her version of halal chicken and rice, and, and so when she when I got back from Barclays like ten thirty, she had already made it. And I was like still a little hungry, so I fucking eat that shit. And, and then at like two or three o'clock in the morning, my stomach starts to hurt. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Two day a day later, it's still in pain, and I it's like debilitating pain. Go to the hospital. Turns out I have a bowel obstruction, which is when your intestine is like caught up on some kind of uh, adhesion or like scar tissue. <sighs> Fast forward, like they put a tube down your nose. My shit come like they they had to suck all the shit out, oh. and then, so that your bowel. When you're saying shit, you mean literal, little shit. Little shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and before, suck like, out through your nose. Yeah, they put a tube like. Oh, yeah, bro, it's, you're it's, out. It's, bro, you've out, had right? shit no, in your you're nose. Awake? You're awake. Oh! <laughs> it's an it, they call it an NG tube, but it's so fucking disturbingly painful. Like, it, and it's it's not like it's painful when they put it in, but for the rest of the time, it's like just this uncomfortable. Like, you're. I was oh, the most irritated I've ever been for 12 hours in a row. 12? Yeah, because you, you got to have a tube. They suck it out for like 12, 12 hours. hours. Yeah, it's like a crazy thing. about sucking shit through a straw. It takes a while. Well, yeah. I thought yeah. I was going to say it's yeah. got to be a faster way to do this. No, no, no. Fuck. no, no, no. It's, it's, so I was super irritated for like 12 hours. And then the doctor's like, we, we, couldn't, we don't understand why you had a, a adhesion or whatever. And I was like, I had surgery on my right side before. You know, the hernia was on my right side. The orchiectomy, the testicle removal was on my right side. Like, did you ever have a hernia when you were a kid? I was like, yeah, probably like when I was like two years old. I was like, that's it. That's probably it. 
you had some scar tissue your bowel got caught up on it probably because you ate all this shit probably it ate so much i was taking like mad fiber pills and, <laughs> and what it really was is that i was shitting on Kyrie for practicing ramadan that's why they're playing so goddamn poorly <laughs> <laughs> Stop, now's not the time to not eat, Kyrie. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you doing, man? You ain't, you ain't Hakeem Olajuwon. <laughs> Hakeem's been Muslim his whole life. And he, he does right, it all the yeah, time. All the he time. knows like, how to do it. Kyrie, like, you, don't pick, if you're going to pick and choose when to be Muslim, nah, now, nah, play off, nah, close out nah, game dude. is not the that's time to do it. That's fucking hilarious. And that's what happened. You Are you, you're, a, you're a genuine Nets fan? No, I was just, I oh. like, I root for them. I used to, I would go uh, uh, to the Nets games all the time because, uh, Jeremy Lin one time came to the cellar and me and Sam Marill recognized him. We sent him a drink and he was like so gracious afterwards. He's like, like if you ever want to come to the game, just let me know. No shit. And I was like, I will take full advantage of your generosity because he wasn't playing at the time. He got injured. And so like all his seats were like where his friends and family would come, like were just available. No yeah. one's going to come see you. Like if they weren't playing, if he wasn't playing. So my wife and I, we would go like, we lived down the street. So we just go all the time. I just mm -hmm. became like a fan of the venue of the spot. And like, mm -hmm. just like, it's a good time. Uh, so um, no, short answer. No, I'm not a big. I, th Nets I thought fan. being from Jersey because because we we say like I, I don't know any. Nets There's fans. like one real Nets. Oh, yeah, fan. Yeah, 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 real yeah. Nets it's crazy. Fan. There's it's, a few. If you see a person with a Nets shirt on, they probably work for the team somehow. Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> legit. I mean, I, I you know I've been in New York my whole life to see how little buzz Kyrie Harden and and KD got. Like yeah. it was still a Knicks town. A hundred percent. If they won the title, it would be obvious. But even then, I think it would. Just, it's. I, I don't think it's possible. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I can't call what would make them exciting. It's just I mean, the Knicks are the absolute worst franchise, maybe in all of sports, and they still are just they dominate the town. There's nothing That's like a fucking Knicks than, game, man. Yeah, There's I mean, nothing like yeah, a Knicks for real. It's it's just it's still a better product than the Nets. I don't yeah, know how. Sure. I don't know why. It's just it is just that way. My man. my favorite thing with with the Knicks is I'm from Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and is when people are like, dude, when the Knicks are good, yeah. there's nothing like it. Whole city rooting for the right. same team. And I hear that I'm like, yeah, that's what every other city's I know. like. <laughs> <laughs> I know. like yeah. But it's, that's what we're all like with our baseball team and like, our basketball team and our football team. But there's just a team. latent there's a latent mm -hmm. Knicks fandom in every person in New York. Yeah. I think in like Boston and these other big towns, it's like they're all about it almost all the time. Whereas in New York specifically with the Knicks, it's just like there's something here. And they're just laying dormant. Just, waiting yeah. just wait, just wait <laughs> till we it, win it, a one it playoff is, game. It's, it's <laughs> what every Dude, other I, city has, but there's so many fucking people. Yeah. And also because we don't have it, it's like a special thing. Like yeah. you guys are just used to it. You take it for granted. I, you know, there's, there's never a time where I was ever watching sports with my friends and enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> every, so every time sad. I was watching my teams win, mm -hmm. I was at odds with my friends. The yeah. only time we can ever enjoy sports together as friends is the Knicks. Yeah, that's and, crazy. And it's like, we and we don't get to do that. I mean, fucking last year, or a year and a half ago, was it two years? Last year when they made it to the playoffs, that was yeah, fun. Yeah. So got I, I, I was walking box, home but. down 7th Ave, and I was like, I didn't know what had happened. <laughs> I thought like because I, I didn't. I'm not. I'm not really a basketball guy. I'm certainly not a Knicks guy. Uh -huh. So I, like I didn't know what their schedule was, and I was like walking down seventh, like seventh and third, full blown park. And I was like, what the fuck yeah, is going? Shoes. Now I put it together pretty quickly because there were so many Knicks jerseys. But I was like, why the fuck? Like I, I, I know they, the then, playoffs just started, and then people make fun of them, and I get why. Like we we like threw a parade for winning a playoff. Yeah, game. of course. But also like fuck that. Like that's awesome to me. That's what it's about. Like, oh, yeah. I don't want to be the team that takes it for granted. We go a little overboard, like. Acting like you know we're the best team in the league because we made the. Playoffs. You never know so when like, it's going to happen again uh, with yeah, this mix. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> win one can, game is. It, it, I mean, I say with baseball, I think it's fucking insane uh -huh. that they do the champagne celebrations after every 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 yeah. round. We won that single. Game. Whereas, like, if like, I if I could fuck be, you, KD, fuck. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we don't need your ass. <laughs> <laughs> the like, if I could be a, a hockey hard on for a second, like when the hockey when they win the conference championship, they don't touch the trophy. Yeah, because like, like that's not a trophy we want, so right. like, they don't touch it to spoil it. No, that's Whereas cool. the right, the fucking baseball players win a single game, win gonna, the fucking playing game, yeah. and they're putting on goggles and spraying champagne in the locker room. That's crazy to me. Yeah. I, I, I am sixty two games though, bro. I'm yeah. somewhere in the middle of like, you know, the only one trophy matters, which yeah. I, I do believe that. But also like, yeah, you can have some fucking celebrations along the way, but a champagne celebration, a, a bing game. bong, is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Red Sox guy? I'm a Red Sox guy. Got it. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's good. laughs> no, but that's you know right. what? It's, it's okay. been okay. Yeah, yeah. It's been okay. I'm but actually, that, it is crazy that I, I I learned the other day. So it has been good. We have we have four trophies this uh four four World Series this uh decade uh, century. Uh -huh. 
Um, but we've actually finished last more times than we've won. I the was World gonna Series. say it's, it's all enough. It's yeah, guys, you know, we finished, we finished I, I, last, I would, fifth, I would trade one, for that. four. I would absolutely trade for that. I would too. at any time because then you can just check out. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, right. I don't need to worry about this. this. They, they don't care about this season. I don't either. Fine, yeah, fuck yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've been to I think two Yankees games this season. I'm not a big baseball guy. We just like it. My friends just love going to the game. It's just so yeah. much fucking fun to do. And this is the first year I went to a hockey game, live hockey game ever in my whole life. Yeah, and well, luckily, I got to go with uh, Che, and we we had some pretty awesome seats. And I was yep. just like, I got to like. Live hockey is not marketed well enough. No, it's so people, people, much fucking People do fun. know, like people all say all the time, like live hockey is the best of all live sports. But like, but but I don't think people take enough time to try to go do it. Like, yeah, go yeah, yeah. fucking yeah. do it. It's so much fun. It's such a crazy environment. It's nonstop action. Yeah. I fu- I loved it. I was yeah, like, was cool. and then you get a nice twenty minute break each time. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You get a piss. A beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Awesome. It feels good. good. Yeah. Come back and, it, <laughs> yeah. and, and it is like because it is. I I don't like going to. I've, I've been to a lot of football games. But probably I don't know hockey still mostly, but mm-hmm. I've been to a lot of football games. And even at a football game, my favorite ones are always the ones where it's a blowout and it turns into a party. Yeah, you can stop like because it is it, I, again, again it. kind of like tales all this time is like there's actually only like six minutes of action in a football game. Yeah, and then when you stand there, you're like Jesus fucking Christ, can we can we play the chain? Hurry up! Yeah, Whereas yeah, yeah. hockey oh, is moving the entire time. It's almost like ice soccer. It's, it's like all, right. even after a score, it's like there's no so it's like ten seconds celebration yeah. back on the <laughs> ice. It yeah. fucking yeah. go crazy. It's like fucking awesome. I, I want to wrap up here since we did talk about um, candy and cancer. <laughs> Have you ever seen both in one can? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Warhead soda. Is it good? It's is it actually not actually bad, not though? as bad as uh-huh. you would think. Did you grow up on Of course, Warheads? I fucking love yeah. Warhead. Like how many can you put in your mouth at yeah, once? Yeah, yeah, and how yeah. long? We found these today in a bodega, and I thought for sure this would be the worst thing I ever put in my mouth. Uh-huh. Actually, not as bad as you think. It's, yeah. it's like. How much sugar is in it? Oh, 37 grams. Okay, all that's right. That's actually not worse than the other <laughs> it's, it's, it's a Gatorade. It yeah. does say 0% juice. Yeah. <laughs> 100% cancer. Uh, if you pull it off, you put the a label off, there's like an engine coolant. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's really what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking disgusting. Fucking $5 for a soda is no joke, too. Is five it, bucks? For five bucks? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No way! Yeah. You drop fifty bucks on all this? Yeah. He fucking he mm. he. You got every flavor, the, or he chugged mm. the, the can of blue raspberry. I blue raspberry. I sipped on the sour and the lemon, and that is cherry and black cherry yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah. Well, Those are fucking. Vile. They're they're nice to look at. I will not try them. <laughs> <laughs> right here. This is yeah, as a cancer water. survivor, yeah, I would yeah. not. I would not recommend. <laughs> not it either. tempting the devil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. So the specials. Thank you, China. Yes, sir. Uh, tickets on sale. You on tour right now or no? I'm on tour right now. Uh, I just did Wilbur Theater in Montreal, JFL. I got Portland, Seattle, Denver, Brea, London, England. I'm not sure you got Ooh, if you guys are international. In London. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. I've been talking a lot of shit about England, so <laughs> we'll see who turns out. And then uh, yeah, rest of my shit is on FindingNemesh.com. I'm, Finding I'm going Nemesh. through the year. Com. In New York City, Town Hall, last show of the year, December 17th. Please come out. Dude, town, town Hall's yeah, fucking town hall's gonna be fun. You were at Gramercy for the special, right? Yeah, taped the special at Gramercy. was like 300 seats, so it's like 600 total seats. This one is, I think, 1,500, so let's see if we Big can boy, fucking sell it go. out. Let's go. Let's go. We did right, We man. did Gramercy for our live show recently. Yeah. Great wild, venue. Great venue while this green room I've ever been in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. green room feels like, like an opium den. Oh, yes. the, like the, downstairs yeah, yeah. Yeah, with, the, with the wallpaper. Yeah, the, yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty sick. It's we should just get some opium next time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, you got it. All right, bro. Appreciate it, man. Well, thank, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate you, man. Thank appreciate you very much. You, appreciate thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Please subscribe to KFC Radio on YouTube to get all the video content. Uh, subscribe, comment, like, and make sure you turn on the bell notifications so you know whenever new video content drops. I want to tell you something, but the video has to be faster. That's it.